Ralph Little, so his career as an actor was launched by the classic royal family. He's now at all out war with Jeremy Hunt, the health secretary. Honestly, it was the mother of all Twitter spats. Uh, he challenged Jeremy Hunt to a debate about the National Health Service. He's very, very passionate about the NHS and the threat posed by privatisation and the Tory government. So I want to talk to him about that, about what drove him to start campaigning about the NHS and where next. Hiya. Yeah. Got your tea already. I've got my tea, you've got my brew. Oh, to go. Cheeky little bit, it's a bit, mm. a bit tepid actually now. <laughs> I overbrewed it as well, Val. A schoolboy era. <laughs> schoolboy era, that. You can um, expect better from a northerner. I know, well, we're both plastic northerners now. I find this funny when I do these sorts of interviews because it's like people I watched on telly when I was a teenager. That also makes me feel very old. When you watched MTV. Oh my, like, that is a long it time It was, back. it was a long time ago. Wow. I remember I watched on MTV with Kelly Brock. And when I was masquerading as a heterosexual, I had a big poster <laughs> of, of Kelly Brook on my wall. <laughs> Brilliant. I bet she'd be absolutely delighted. Right, so, <laughs> recently you've been getting kind of, I think, some people would say kind of a bit of a political activist. Is that how, how, is that how you see yourself? No, it's really weird. I've never thought I was political. My family's quite political. My granddad was, um, was mayor of Berry. Oh, there you was go. was conservative mayor of Berry. My granddad was a great man who wanted the best for as many people. And it's kind of, oh, I always try and remember that going, Generally, people are decent. They might have different ways of doing things, but generally, people are decent. So, I've tried in all my um, random Twitter activism that I never thought I was going to get involved in. I do try and not alienate vast swathes of people because I, I don't know, I don't know how productive it is. In this country, there is a crisis over mental health services. What the coalition government said is there'd be parity of esteem yeah. between physical and mental health, which is nice to say as a yeah. thing, but in practice. There have been huge cuts to mental health services. What made you want to talk out about that issue? If I'm really honest, it wasn't because I'm massively invested in mental health. I found myself astonished that he and the government were spinning the junior doctor strike and basically trying to turn the public with some degree of success against doctors. And I'm getting people on time going, I support junior doctors. And to my astonishment, when I first sort of started on Twitter, I used to think that you'd say something like that and you'd have an avalanche of people going, nice one, mate. But what you have is an avalanche of people going, no, they're greedy. They're, greedy. They're, not, they're doctors. If there's a group of people who, who, whose MO is to literally be selfless and help out, it's doctors. And then you've got people going, oh, well, you know, it's a vocation. They should want to do it. You train for five years to do something and then not get paid very much. And it mostly wasn't even about the money anyway. It was about being made to work ridiculous hours. You know, the lorry driver's hours were protected more than, more than doctor's hours because it's dangerous to do their job. It's very dangerous to be a doctor when you're exhausted. So the sheer sort of arrogance of trying to turn the public against that made me very, very angry. I just got on Twitter and went, you're lying, mate. This is what, what did I say? This is what it looks like when a man goes on television and lies to the British public. If I'm wrong, Jeremy Hunt, sue me, I double dare you. He didn't see you, did he? No, he Just yeah. to ruin the... Not so. yet. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it's difficult. Running the NHS is not an easy job. No one's saying that. I don't think that Jeremy Hunt's got an easy job. You've got to be honest. Don't, don't tell people that it's going well when it's not. Stop lying. Everybody knows. Everybody on the ground in the NHS knows it's not going well. And Jeremy Hunt's statistics that he put out when fact-checked didn't make sense. So he'd be saying things like, um, more people have been seen by mental health doctors. Sure, more people have actually encountered a mental health professional and gone, hello, this is my name. And but that's not the same as they've been evaluated and treated and consulted and whatever. They've just been seen. And so it's a statistic that whilst it's not untrue, it doesn't tell you anything. It just makes him sound better. Stephen Hawking said, you are cherry picking statistics. You're picking the statistics that suit your needs rather than telling the whole picture. And Jeremy Hunt had the audacity to tell Stephen Hawking, whose job is to evaluate statistics, and he's pretty good at it. Are you saying that Jamie Hunt might not be as qualified as Stephen Hawking? To or? talk about evidence and statistics. And what yes. Jamie Hunt's response was, instead of going, oh, I've been called out by Stephen Hawking, I should probably have a think about whether I cherry pick statistics or I need to get damage limitation, he went, Stephen, you're lying, mate. He used the phrase, the most pernicious falsehood you have told. And I don't know why that made me so angry, but it was, you're openly accusing Stephen Hawking of lying when all that Stephen Hawking has said is that you're cherry picking, picking statistics. Do you not think the very existence of the NHS as a publicly run organisation is an embarrassment to a Conservative Party whose ideology is about competition and profit? I do think that that, <clears throat> that ideology uh, butts heads with, with what the NHS is and I think that's a problem. It's not a luxury item. It's everything. It's the first thing, you know. Why there's a reason there's a phrase, oh, at least you've got your health, you know, if you have nothing else. 
the British government, whoever it is, Tory, Labour, Greens, whoever you want, UKIP, let's hope not. <laughs> Although we might as well have a UKIP government, some would say, but anyway. Um, it has to stay, for, for my money it has to, because you, otherwise, you, otherwise you are literally putting a, a, a money, monetary figure on, on a human being's right to be healthy. What are your main fears about the NHS at the moment? Up until like a year or two years ago, it was five, six percent of, of money coming into the NHS was from private healthcare. Laws have been passed to make that you're allowed to have 49%. Yeah, up to. Up to 49%. Yeah. Okay. That's an extremely symbolic figure. That's like an invading army coming right up to the border, but not just, not quite over the border, but they're there. And I'm absolutely more than ever kind of advocating for more mental health care, as I realise it's, it's the biggest, one of the biggest problems facing us now, but actually bigger than anything is this sort of secret privatisation. If I was Pierce Morgan, which I'm not, and I would say... Very similar though, in a lot of ways. A lot of striking <laughs> parallels between me and... Yeah. What I would say is, oh, you actor, showbiz, celeb person, get yeah. out of politics. Although, doesn't apply the same standards to his mate Donald Trump. What do you say to that response? Because that's, that is what people will or say. to himself, like, what's he most known for? Aside from being uh, fired for staging photographs. Um, but some people would say, will say, it's a very common retort, celebs shouldn't get involved in politics. Obviously, I think that's nonsense, because I'm a citizen of the country just as much as anybody else is. There are plenty of people with very opposing views to mine. Mm. Katie Hopkins is known for being on The Apprentice. Why, yeah. why, why aren't the people... Nobody on the left wing ever says to me, stay out of politics. I don't think anybody in the left wing says to Katie Hopkins, stay out of politics. Mm. Because, the, because people... But her followers, because, people cheering her on, yeah, say, are the sort you're of people that go... But exactly. she, wasn't she on The Apprentice? And back Donald Trump, who was... Wasn't the president of the United States yeah. on The Apprentice. Yeah. I don't understand. And also, look... Are you saying they're applying different standards? Yeah. Maybe. Shocking. But also, if you're a citizen of a country and you vote and you pay your taxes, <clears throat> you're involved in politics. Mm. You, you have a voice. That said, I do veer wildly between going, who do I think I am? I mean, it's such a grandiose kind of, I think my voice is important kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> I, you know, I do think that myself. So I slightly sympathise with people who go, who are you? <laughs> what do you think? This, didn't you, you're just that actor. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, feel free to unfollow. Why do you think so many people voted for Brexit? Because in the communities we, we grew up with, and have since abandoned. No. But well, we're, we're elite now. According to Twitter, I'm either a multi-millionaire champagne socialist. Oh my, I would love to be as wealthy as people on Twitter that seem to think I am. I'd be great. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be talking to you, you chump. I'd be off in the, in the Seychelles. Enough. Thanks very much. But look, my, my, my mum voted leave. Why do you think she voted leave? Oh, well, you probably know, you chat to her. Because she's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I do know Your why. Beloved I'm, mother. Let's I do. Clear. Well, I was furious with her. I was furious with her. I didn't speak to her for a couple of weeks. Wow. I really didn't. I'll tell you why. And for anyone watching this, I'm not saying that if you voted leave, this is what I was just angry at the time. But I'll tell you what I said to her at the time. You've sided with racists. You're not a racist. You're my mother who brought me up with very clear ethical and moral values. You're not a racist. But the decision that you've made has sided with people who are racist. It's an enormously complex issue, but that was the thing that upset me so much. Because the, the leaders of the Leave campaign made a strategic decision to make it about immigration. Yeah. So therefore, even though millions of Leave voters weren't the racist. The vast, enormous majority, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny minority but they, of Leave voters who might actively be racist. The vast majority aren't. The vast majority of Leave voters are great, decent, nice people. Nobody's saying that they aren't. But my mum, to answer your question, voted Leave because she was worried about the economy. And I don't think the Remain campaign was very good. But the, but the Leave terrible. campaign was, it was just lies. It was based, it was lies. And it was about immigrants lies. being potential rapists and terrorists and criminals. And at the, the bus, that was a lie. And now 350 people, million. Now, now people are trying to... Uh, we got that, yeah, 350 million pounds a week. Well, now people are trying to say that the wording on the bus wasn't actually a promise. It's like, the whole thing, it stinks. Jamie Corbyn, Labour. Where, where are you on all that? Well, this might surprise people, but I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those people who go, I could never vote Tory. I could vote for whoever I think has the nation's best interests at heart. I like Corbyn. I like him as a, as a firebrand. I don't subscribe to this, oh, he's not a leader, because I think he's only not a leader because people keep going, oh, he's not a leader. Well, he's a pretty good leader. I liked the manifesto. I, I like a lot of what he's about. I wish he'd have been very more clearly um, anti-Brexit. But I mean, a lot of people would say, yeah, he wasn't going, the EU's amazing, everyone, it's just great as it is. Mm. But that's not where most people are at. And actually, it wouldn't have really worked. He actually said, look, 
yeah, there are problems with it, but we need to stay in change. In any system, there are margins of error, and you know, in the EU, there are quite big ones, but in yeah, lots massive, of ways. massive margins of error, and it needs reform. But you know, if you, if your houses fall into bits, you um, you repair your house. You just don't set it on fire and then go, oh, we probably should have figured out somewhere to live before we did that. So we covered a lot of ground there from the NHS to Brexit. I do think it's incumbent on all of us to defend our most important national institution, which is under attack. So I hope. Uh, that encourages more of us to go out and defend the National Health Service. Uh, we've got loads of interviews to come. Uh, some of them are going to be surprising. I'll leave you guessing in that one. And uh, we've got lots of videos, so do click on them, as ever. Leave your comments, and as ever, subscribe. I'll see you next time.